Wow. Okay, John, are you ready? We're going to start bringing them new ones through. Um, okay. <coughs> Let's go with that thing. Yeah. But I want the inspiration to look rather stark and bold. And it traumatised him. It really traumatised him, showing, showing him his work. But at, at certain moments, at the end of the day, on a couple of occasions, he said, I've, and subsequently, he said, I've, I have nothing to be embarrassed about. I think that says, for him, that's an enormous thing. Heaven knows I, I, I knew John for a very long time, was very close to him, enormously fond of him. But there was an area in, in John which was mysterious, which I never really quite understood. often said of him, you know, he doesn't really like teaching, does he? He doesn't, uh, this isn't what he wants to do. He does it extremely well, but obviously what he wants to do is paint. strongly with him, that there was a lot big fire underneath. You, 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 you look at the biography in it and, and, and you wouldn't know <laughs> the kinds of passions and turbulence that there was with John. I think John was a perfectionist, a perfectionist above all about his own uh, writing and painting. And I think that he must have realized that he, he had, a, to some extent, had succeeded in achieving perfection in his writing. But he would never, and no artist ever achieves perfection in their, in their painting or sculpture. As an historian, he was peerless. Uh, so in a way, the struggle for him was to be a painter, not to be a historian. The struggle for him from you know, the early 60s onwards, for the rest of his life, was to be a painter. And, of course, that's where he'd begun. All artists are by definition narcissists. Uh, you know, otherwise I wouldn't spend one's life looking into a mirror, as it were. Um, but equally, I, I, I don't like the idea of... I'd like to think that I paint myself out of my pictures. Yes. You can't actually treat them as a puzzle where you can, which has a solution because they don't have a solution. And I think that that is their, their strength. Um, I see sort of virtually everything I paint as being an homage to Cezanne now. Mm. His landscape feeds my own painting. Yes. Although I continue to see my abstracts as really relating to body imagery. Although he denied it always, you know, it's absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, they had this sort of sense for me of kind of sort of wind, I mean, I, you know, uh, water even, you know, the elements, the elements really. They're very satisfying objects, I think, because they feel very thought through. And there's a freedom in them, but there's somehow a sense of composition. There's a, a calculated and careful aspect to these paintings. 
but I think he was also always um, on the lookout for that moment when things gel in a, a completely unpredictable way. The realm of reflection gives way to that sort of moment in which, I, yes, I've grasped my emotion here. You know, I've been painting long enough that I can make painting look all right. Uh, but but that's not enough. I mean, it's 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 got to give one back some sort of psychological yes. truth, some sort of psychological impact that it's got to have on its own, independent of one of oneself. One of the things that would be would be really intriguing with a, you know, a decent retrospective would probably be to understand the continuities. the need to look seriously to his painting is still to happen. And I think when it happens, people will be surprised by the, by the, uh, the, depth, of, uh, the depth in those paintings. I think they're really very good. <laughs>